I had to describe tempeh in under two sentences. The taste, um, it, it's definitely a very unique taste. I've tried hard to really nail it down, this tempeh by itself. Nutty, soybeany. Honestly, it tastes just like a Reuben sandwich. Personally, when I first tried it, I thought it was fish. <laughs> definitely a very natural taste. I'm not a big fan of the taste of tempeh, the mold, the texture on my tongue. Words cannot describe something that is meant to be tasted. Tempeh is a product made with soybeans that is obtained through a process of fermentation. The mold grows on the beans. <laughs> I don't know if, I, if that would get people interested in trying it, but the best way is to just try it. It's not an industrial process, but it's always changing. Tempeh is more like farming than it is cooking or producing something. Not two batches are exactly the same. No, the first time I tried tempeh was way back in the 70s. I was visiting a spiritual community that had adopted a totally vegetarian diet. I liked it, so uh, later when I moved to Gainesville, I started uh, experimenting. First I started making just for my family, then it was uh, my neighbor and my friends, and then another person. Then there was a little buying club. It took many years to develop a big enough clientele that I could say, now I can afford to start a shop. I'm not a very good salesman anyway. I just wait for people to ask me. I started with Jose after owning steamers for about 10 years and was buying tempeh from him progressively in greater amounts. Being of a marketing mind and business mind, I quickly realized that I myself was a meat eater and I enjoyed tempeh. And that kind of started to grow on me. I would put the bug in his ear, hey man, this food is a vegan food, but it doesn't have to be exclusively for vegans. Imagine if we could take the uh, edge off the meat industry in every town in America. Let's get rid of the meat industry, let's limit it, let's take a cut out of it, let's, let's beat back the pollution, beat back the harm to the animals, let's beat back the abuse to the human body. And he liked that idea. And then in 2005, I go, dude, we could facilitate a co-op tempeh shop where essentially I take it on the road and you have the exclusivity of Gainesville. Now, obviously, the plan's altered to some degree. We have a policy. We only sell to restaurants or, or individuals. The idea for us is to sell directly to the person who cooks the tempeh. And I would like tempeh to become known as a local product rather than something that comes from a factory across you know, the continent. No, you because can buy the tempeh in the packages in the refrigerator. At the, it's, it's not awful. not even close to yours. I mean, it's okay, I guess. But once you had the really good stuff, that just... <laughs> I was wondering if I could just come and buy it. You're going to find it at Ward's and the Farmer's Market. market. Wait, which one? Downtown? That downtown, just, yeah. You could buy it just past Ward's. Ward going east, next to that Russian grocery store. My apprentice is now running that shop. Uh, but we are independent. The original plan was that I would continue being the tempe maker in Gainesville, and he would be the tempe maker in Jacksonville. He wanted us to um, have this co-op based on us not having bills and us not having uh, licenses. I'm not all about the federal government or the, the big man, but at the same time, I, I do my best to sleep well at night. Jose's a um, guerrilla warfare mentality and my beat the man in his own game don't go together. The Jacksonville idea did not work out. So then he asked me if he could start getting accounts here. I said, okay, but by then it became a competition now. So one day he came to me and he said, hey, I think I'm gonna go do this again on my own. I did not want to continue sharing my ideas, my technology with a competitor. It was within six months after we first started. I had to pay my bills. So instantly I went to some friends and owned restaurants and they were quick, quick to be selling a lot of tempeh. It was unfortunate that uh, we could not grow as we had planned. But I, I in, in a way enjoy having a competitor. 
We took it to laboratories, had it checked out because we wanted to know the amino acid density. We really picked up on some nuances of the tempeh that Jose had simply left out. If he develops some new product or some new technology, great. I would be very pleased to see that. If anything, my development of the, of the Artie's tempeh has taken Jose to a level outside of his garage. He's doing five times the volume now than he was doing three years ago when we first started, and that was the most he'd ever done in 27 years. To have someone who, hey, can come up with a better product, then you try harder. The competition is good. It drives you. If not, you sit. I paid dearly for everything that I've developed. Time, money. I'm the kind of guy that likes to walk the way I talk it. I care a lot about how I got where I'm at. It's a little tough for me to wake up every day and to think that there's someone angry at me about something that we never really got to work on or talk about. But it was almost like we were supposed to just bump into each other and get things to connected. And the breaking apart was the painful part, but it was the part that was gonna make the thing happen a little bit better for what I believed in and what he believed in.